can go a whole career working in the entertainment industry and kind of feel like you're contributing to this horrible beast of feeding people's insecurities and and making people feel like like there's an unattainable aspect of life or, or, or living in this perfect kind of world that's created on TV. And I think with Point on Earth, the thing that made it so different is that it was a show that changed so much for the better and created so much more positivity and it just made me crave working on stuff like that so much more because it's so rare and it's so special and it, it gives you a sense of pride in your work that I think sometimes you don't get in this industry. Thank you. All right, next question. Um, from the top of the mind, your mind, the first thing that comes to mind is what is the one thing that um, content creators in the industry can do to improve queer representation in media? I think making sure that the content creators are queer, I think, is, is the biggest thing. I think especially with um, the, the, the feminist movement in Hollywood right now overall, and then especially with queer content, I think you need to have people in the writer's room, people producing, directing. Those people are making the decisions. It's not the actors. We're kind of the last to come on board. So I think we need, we need that representation right from the get-go, right from the top, and we need people to be telling their own stories. Thank you. Next. Uh, just a bridge on that, because you also make your own movies. So, um, where do you find your inspiration? Do you have one big dream project that you really, really hope you can make one day? I do have a dream project. I have a feature that I'm working on right now, but um, the movies just take so, so long to put together. It's amazing the like amount of years behind the scenes that they do. But I think, I think for me, being a creator just makes me feel. Um, it's a different aspect of being in this industry, and it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. I feel like if I can be on the other side of the camera and make those decisions and tell my version of my experience of the world, um, I think it just brings more, more diversity. I'm not sure if I hope, totally answered your question, though. Well, what would your dream project be? What would it be? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I want to, I would like to create some sort of female underground vigilante superhero. Cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question. Um, yeah, what do you think um, is so important about having conventions like Clexicon especially yeah. and um, why do you think it's important that people like yourself, the people who are there, turn up to them and really make a sort of effort to be there? I think it's important because I, what I've noticed doing these conventions now over the past couple of years, you start to notice patterns. Hello. Come in. Talk about this person. I'll start again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so we were talking about these conventions. Yeah. So over the past couple of years, I feel like I've noticed definitely some patterns. And the pattern that I think is so great is the guests start coming for us, but for each other. So you see these groups of people go to these conventions all over the world, over and over again, because they want to be with their friends and they found this community. And I think. That's what's so beautiful about these things, is you have this feeling of people who have maybe felt really isolated and came from a small town or somewhere where they don't feel accepted, and then they come to this amazing, beautiful weekend full of acceptance and love and happiness and celebration, and um, I think especially in this community, feeling like you have a place to belong and where you're celebrated and respected is huge, and I think that's why it's so important for us to come, because that's us also saying, yes, let's celebrate this, let's... Let's be together and let's share it and, and, and be proud of who we are. And I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. Do you, sorry, do you um, think there's any difference because you're in the UK now and yeah. you're, you've been to a, a love fest as well? Do you think there's any difference between a representation in the Canada or uh, America as opposed to um, uh, Europe? I would say Europe. It depends on where you are within the country. America is such a huge country that I think there's definitely a difference in different cities. I will say my biggest, um, I mean, the experience that I've had so far was when I went to Brazil. It's a very different situation over in Brazil, especially with what's happened recently with their presidency. And um, I think that is, even going back to your question, that's why it, it's so important that we keep having these things, especially for um, people who can't be here, because they still get to experience the videos and they still, at least there's a sense of even just knowing that it's happening and knowing that they can engage with that community online. But I think the biggest difference I felt was in Brazil, North America, and the EU, 
we, we're, we're in a very different place with representation and acceptance and respect and all of these things. Whereas I feel like definitely in Brazil there was a completely different shift of, I mean the bravery that it took for a lot of those people to even come was incredible. And I'm talking serious, like not just emotional bravery, but some people who are afraid for their safety, which is horrible. And um, just as a good reminder of how far we have to go. Thank you. The question is there. So I'm from the German lesbian <laughs> Um So you've talked to many, um, I don't know, fans mm -hmm. by now? Yeah. <laughs> the cons? Yeah. The real pro. So what do you think is the, the secret of the young? It's a great question. Um, I think Wayhot came at a time when we really needed it. It was kind of the, I call it the, the imperfect perfect storm. So it was this time in the media where we lost so many queer characters at once. It was a horrible year for queer representation. And Wayhot was this beacon of hope and positivity. And I think on a show like Why Down Earth with what our showrunner Emily has done to create such an inclusive and happy place for these Urkers and also the fact that Emily told the fans you don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. You know, you can trust the show. I want you to enjoy the show. I don't want you to be watching the show worry that your favorite character something bad's gonna happen to your favorite characters. So I think the secret of Way Hot is partially the safety that our creator um, made sure that all the fans had so they could relax and just enjoy the show. But I think the secret of Way Hot is that they're three-dimensional characters. I never thought going into Nicole, oh, I'm here to play a gay character. I thought I'm here to play the town cop. And that was my kind of thinking going into it. That's what I was focusing on. I wasn't focusing on the fact that Nicole was gay. She, that was just an aspect of who she was. She loved this beautiful girl. She had this huge crush. It was like fun and flirty. And she was a cop. And, and I think that was always the way that Way Hot was treated is they were these two women in very hard jobs who just fell in love with each other. And I think that's the secret, is that these characters are so three-dimensional and it really had nothing to do with them being gay, which made them so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Hi, I'm hey. Jay from Starry Mac. Hey, nice to see you. Great to see you. Uh, you played some uh, very dramatic and complex roles throughout your career. Mm -hmm. And you just spoke about that that dream product that you were just thinking about. <laughs> yeah. uh, what kind of role do you see that you really want to tackle and kind of get a new challenge maybe um, for yourself? I mean, I secretly, like, just as an indulgent thing, always wanted to be in a period piece. Okay. I really, really would like to, I, I did this uh, episode of Rain with me and Follows like a long time ago with a horrible British accent, so I'd like to redeem myself. I really would, I mean, I'm such a sucker for that stuff. I I, um, I, I just, I know it's, it's, and I, I want to play a superhero. The dream yeah. job. The, that's, the, that's the dream job, I think. I, I just have this fascination with. I love the idea of physically getting into that role too, the training and all that stuff I think would be really fun, especially coming from like a sports background. I just think I love the tie-in of that. But so um, maybe a, a, a period slash superhero movie. We're gonna look out for it. Yeah, look out for it. In period trauma. Yeah, I think mean, that would be fun, right? I mean they kinda did it in Wonder Woman, yeah. so it can be done. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much for your recent speech about mental health. Um, you started off by saying that you were kind of nervous about it because you didn't know how the response would be. And I was wondering how the response has been. Was there anything negative to it because you said maybe like, like I'm afraid yeah. to get, not get hired? Or yeah, I mean, not that I know of. There might be still. It's still pretty, it was only a few months ago, I think. Um, I do feel like we have crossed, hopefully, a threshold with mental health. I've seen, I feel like in the past, year, two years, it's been spoken about a lot more in the media and people are coming out with their own struggles more and more and their triumphs and successes. Like just getting to see someone who you admire because we're really good in the media at creating this kind of perfect persona where it's almost as if, if you work as an actor, your life is any different than anyone else's, which is completely untrue. And um, I, I just feel like everyone's been super supportive. I've gotten nothing but great feedback from people of how it just helped to see someone that they admired or whatever um, speak about her own struggles, which I did, and I think it, I think it's just we have to keep talking about it, and I, I don't think 
there's we should be scared. And I kind of feel that if someone doesn't want to work with me because I speak openly about my mental health, then I'm not sure if I want to work with them. For me personally, I just wanted to like, say thanks because it gave me the courage to actually make a video about someone committing suicide who's close to me. Okay. So just thanks for that. It was like right after your speech. So amazing. Yeah. Well, congrats thanks. to you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tanya, one, one more question. One more question. One more question. Uh, hi, I'm Melanie for the Kind Habit. Um, I was just wondering, on why not, or throughout your career on all your projects, was there anything really memorable or challenging that um, just sticks in your mind that you were really proud of? I was really proud of the Maeve episode. It's episode 310. Where Nicole, it's um, kind of a, it's not a body swap, but uh, I play a teenage ghost witch, so she, I'm possessed. And I was really, really nervous for that um, because I thought it was going to be too big and too theatrical. Um, but I'm proud of how it turned out. I thought it was really fun. And I really trusted our director, April Mullen, who directed that episode. I remember saying to her, I'm just going to go for it. So you need to pull me back if it's too much. You need to be honest with me. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And um, the hardest project I've ever, I mean, the f most physically demanding project I've ever done was actually a movie for sci-fi called Lake Placid, which was um, basically night shoots for three weeks in the cold, very like wet, and it was just physically really demanding. I wasn't expecting it to be as hard as it was, so I think, on uh, that side note, but I think the thing I'm most proud of was probably that meme episode. Um, that was it. It was Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very yeah. awesome. Thank you very much.